Hey guys, welcome to Photoshop Jazz Tutorials, and this week is going to be a Halloween y type of tutorial. We're going to be making a candy corn text effect. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are turning our text into candy corn. Now, it's a little bit um, involved, there's a lot to it, kind of, sort of, but I will walk you through it step by step, layer by layer. Alright, so first of all, we need, to make, we need to get our candy corn already situated. Now, how do you do that? Well, you basically have to make candy corn in Photoshop. So, we're going to make a brush to use for this effect. So, we're going to start off with a new document. Um, I'm using 500 by 500 document size, so I would go with that. That's how I'm using it, and that's how it's going to be working well to our advantage. So, once you've got your document open, grab a your elliptical shape tool. And you're going to make it, now it doesn't matter the color, I'm using black just because it's going to, but we're going to change the color of it anyway, so it doesn't really matter I guess, but yeah. And you want to make a shape similar to what I have shown here, and the size doesn't really particularly, well, yes it does kind of matter, um, just of that size, okay, that that's a relatively good size, um, but nothing too big that will over um, your document. Alright, once you have that. We're going to now go over here to our direct selection tool. Your direct selection tool is right below your type tool, if you didn't know that, but I'm sure most of you know that by now if you're an advanced person such as myself. Direct selection. All right, take that and you're going to now drag, click on it, and it will then give you your little points and stuff for your path. You're going to then want to drag this out so that you get a relatively candy corn like shape. So I'm dragging this side here, whoa, well, yeah, okay. And then I'm going to drag out that side there. Alright, now that looks candy corn-like to me, sort of, kind of. But you can, again, adjust it to see what looks good to you. But that's relatively the shape we're looking for, something of that matter. But no one's perfect, so if it's not exactly like mine, that's fine. But whatever's close to that shape. Once you make your lovely shape in there, you're going to then need to define that as a pattern. Now let's see if I can do this properly. Alright, so once you've done that, you can click out of that path set and you're good to go. And then go to here to edit and select define brush preset. Now before we actually do that, I want to let you know that if you go to edit and your define brush preset is grayed out, which mine was in the beginning when I tried this tutorial, you're going to want to make sure that your path selection is unselected, that you're not in your direct selection, that your selection is not there. You have just the shape. Because if your uh, path selection is still um, available, it will let you do it. So just make sure your path selection isn't there, like you see there. And then you'll have it available to you there. So go to Define Brush Preset, save it to whatever you want to name it, and then you can X out of that document. Now we're going to work on actually making the physical text. Now I have just a regular gray, I made a gray background with a white um, reindeer thing in the center. But um, make whatever kind of document you want. If you want to make a Halloween, like, black document, go for it. That sounds really rad and awesome. Um, I'm going to add some cool um, Halloween effects at the end of the tutorial just to give it a Halloween effect. But for the tutorial purpose, I'll just go right into it. So now let's go with our text. Now, I have a specific font you might want to use. Um, you can try other fonts if you like. But this font I found works really nice and really gives it that Halloween and candy corn effect. So I'm going to leave this for the link to download below in the link description because you might want to use this. But again, you can try other fonts as well. Um, I did try a bunch of fonts I have on my computer and they all just didn't really work well. But I found this font and it works extremely well. So I would use this if I were you. Um, Alright, so let's type our text. I'm just going to do jazz. And the color of your font doesn't matter because we're going to change that. It's not going to really be any different. So, all right, type your text. Cool. Now you're going to right click your text. And the words here are going to say create a work path. You want to do that so that way you have a path and you can then make your stroke. So, create a work path on that. And then you can hide your text and look at that. Ooh, we have lovely path to work with now. Alright, so when you see this, which you should see now, we're going to go over here to our paths thing on by, next to our layers. 
and we're going to make a stroke path. Now we're going to set the stroke path up first before we do anything. So let's go over here to our um, brush section. Now make sure you have your candy corn brush selected. If not, you can do that now. Um, so go push your brush over here and then go over here and um, uh, let's see, where is it? Mine is right here. Mine's named corn. <laughs> and um, for shape, so the brush shape tool, I'm using, um, I used originally um, a 30px size brush, but the reason why you see 20px is because in further in, we're going to change this a bit. So I use 30 pixels on mine, and the spacing, I left that really as an, I don't, I, you know, I played with it a bit. Um, I originally went with 250, I believe, but later in the tutorial, I changed it to, for other reasons, which I'll explain later. Um, and the shape dynamics that I've chosen, the size jitter is 10, um, the control I turn to fade, and then I have 200 selection and a 15% minimum dynamic diameter, um, angle jitter is 3%, my control is direction, and your roundness jitter is 0, and that control stays off. Um, flip Y and X, I selected those because I want them to be different and really just everywhere. And then smoothing is already selected, or it should be. Um, if not, you can change that. And then you can now get out of this and then go back over here to your work path. And you can right-click it. Actually, I can't yet because guess what? I forgot to tell you guys. Before you do that, make a new layer. I'm very sorry about that. Make a new layer above that. Oh, I love myself right now. Okay, on that new layer, you can now create your stroke path. So go ahead and right click this and create stroke path. And you're going to want to use your brush tool which will then create the path you just made within your brush. Don't check off simulate pressure, uncheck that if it's checked off but mine's not so click OK. And ooh look at that! Cool right? So once you have your stroke path the way you like it, you can then delete your work path and you will be left with that. Awesome sauce right? I know! Okay. I'm going to go back into my layers, and I already have that layer already made, and I'm going to show you how to set this layer up to colorize it, all right? So, mine is over here. I think this is the right one, right? Yeah, that's it. All right, so I'm going to, I'll make that visible in a moment. Um, so let's set this whole layer up to make it look like candy corn. So I'm going to start off with the drop shadow. I chose blend mode of multiply with a black drop shadow, that's just standard, and I changed the opacity down to 20%. Um, check global light on this one, yeah I think so, and then 120 degree angle, 5 pixels for your distance and 0% for your spread, size is 7 pixels, and that's that. Okay, now moving down to inner glow, I chose a white color for my choice, uh, blend modes overlay, a 70% opacity, with my technique is precise, a uh, source is center, and your choke is zero, and your size is 16. All right, let's keep going. Bevel and emboss settings are going to be slightly different. So inner bevel, smooth technique, uh, depth is 100%, uh, direction up, that, I think that's standard, right guys? Yeah. Um, your size is 7px. Um, uncheck use global light. We don't need light on this, guys. Just uncheck it. It's not really going to be useful. Um, 117 degree angle up there, your 15 degree, 58 degree altitude, and check anti-allies on this one. Um, I just think it brings more awesomeness to it, so I did that. Um, white is your color for your highlight screen. Your opacity is 65%. And then for my multiply, I just chose a gray color of such. Um, you can choose any gray hue you like, um, whatever works for you. Multiply, multiply for that blend mode and 15% for that opacity. Over here to contour, um, I it's 50% anti-allized and that's it. And then my texture. Now, I will also provide this texture I've used description box below because it will be very handy to you and give it really awesome depth. So, um, in case you're wondering how to um, define this as a pattern, I do have a video explaining how to define a pattern, but to define a pattern from a photo, 
Um, let me briefly explain that. Basically, you'll open the photo, and then you'll go to Edit immediately and Define Pattern. And then you'll have it right there in your pattern section. It's that simple. But I'll also link below how to define a pattern if you want to learn that. But um, yeah. Okay, so once you have your pattern defined in there, click it. It should be the last one there. Um, scale is 100% and your depth is 50%. And that's that for your um, texture. And then now our gradient overlay. Our gradient overlay has a law of coloring. So be prepared to take some time. Um, look at that. That's how it's going to have to go. So basically, you're going to want to make a candy corn like um, color scheme. So I did white, orange, yellow, and then white, orange, yellow, and so on. I had to make a whole bunch of these, and you'll see why in a moment, because if I didn't, it wasn't going to give me that, co that candy corn like color I wanted. So that's why I did it this way. Um, but you can play around with it and give yourself a nice effect that you like. Um, I just added a whole bunch going color scheme wise. Um, white, orange, and yellow all the way to the end. Okay, click OK. We're good to go there. Um, I left everything the same. That's the only thing you're changing is your gradient colors. And then click OK. And you will have that. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, that is amazing. So now you see why I had to do the whole, a whole bunch at a time. Because if I didn't, it wouldn't look as cool. Oh, and before I forget, I think I may have forgotten this, but on my gradient overlay, I selected Reflected because Reflected gave me the nice candy corn-like effect I was looking for. So yay to that. Now, I could have stopped here in the tutorial, and it does look pretty cool, but I want to fill the insides of my text. Of my text. So I did, the, I did almost the same exact effect, but a little bit more differently. So... To fill the inside of your text, if you would like, this is optional, but it makes it more awesome, just letting you know. Make a new layer below your text, okay? And on this new layer, you're going to grab your brush tool with your candy corn brush still selected. You're going to have to alter the, the all, you're going to have to alter just the size the size of the um, candy corn and you're going to have to adjust the spacing just a bit. Only because if you make it the same as it was here with the text, it's going to overlap and look ridiculous. So you want to make it a little bit smaller. I went 10 pixels below what I had chosen, which was 20, as you noticed when I explained before. And with that, I double-clicked my layer. Now, on my layer, I added the same exact um, styles. The only difference that I didn't that I changed up was the color of my candy corn. Because um, as you know, candy corn comes in various colors. I mean, I've seen apple cinnamon. I've seen chocolate candy corn. So I went ahead and just added a new color to make it a different kind of candy corn. So essentially, I made chocolate candy corn or caramel candy corn. So I chose a more caramel-like color instead of the orange, instead of the yellow. So I chose, I went, I went white, orange, brown, caramel, and so on. And that's all that I changed. So basically all you have to do on this layer is just go um, to your other layer and right click and go copy layer style and then paste it on here and then just change the color scheme of your um, gradient. And you basically have your insides of your text. So what you have to do now with this is you're going to have to go piece by piece and click one at a time and place them differently because if you just go with one swoop and go like woohoo like that if you just went like this it wouldn't look really cool on the inside so you have to do it click by click piece by piece placing each individual candy corn brush where you want it it is a little time consuming but in the end it really looks nice and it really gives it that cool effect so let me show you what mine looks like mine looks like that um, I tried to have it not be as colorful or blend in too much with the original orange and yellow, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's Photoshop. Sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to. Sometimes there's things you wish you could do that you know you probably could do, but it just takes a whole lot longer than you want it to, so you just try and find an easy way out. So, easy man ways out, I just did that. So it's still kind of, yeah. Um, oops, that's the wrong one. And on the last layer that we just did with the insides, um, the gradient overlay is still reflected. Um, you could choose reverse if you want. Um, that might give it a more cool effect. I don't know. 
Um, eh, not really. Well, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it up to you to decide. If you want to reverse it and make, if you want to add more color, um, or different candy corn colors, that's cool. You know, whatever. It's your text. But, yeah. So that's basically the text effect itself. But for me, I wanted to add some Halloween-like textures to it, so down below here, I have this, like, really cool, um, oops, <laughs> where is it? Oh, here it is, spider web, um, and then I added a, a random texture behind it just to give it some more depth, um, and I dropped the opacity of the spider web to, like, 10%, just so it's not too overpowering to the texture and the text. Um, but that's basically it, guys. That's how you make candy corn texture, text effect. Um, and, I mean, you could really take this anywhere. You can make a black background with a cat or something, or a pumpkin background. I don't know. Add your own flair and text and awesomeness to it, guys. I give you the basics of the tutorial, and then you do as you will with it and, and take my designs and spread them out with more awesomeness. All right, guys. Thank you for watching, subscribing, liking, and commenting as you have in the past or right now or whenever. I sincerely appreciate you. And I am going to make a video at some point, um, whenever this person gets back to me. There is a person on Patreon. Um, I believe her name is Kelly. She has pledged me $5. And I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for all, the, all that you do and that you like me that much where you feel I am that gracious and I have that much of a gift that you're willing to give me $5 a month to make this channel more awesome and give you more creative content to enjoy. So thank you to your lovely support and your patronism. I I thank you for that. So um, whatever, whatever kind of a video you want or whatever you want from me to you, I will definitely create that for you. So thank you. And again, thank you all for watching and subscribing. You're awesome.